it's six o'clock. I'd like to open up the meeting, but Brett's here. Um, and then I have a few adjustments to the agenda. Um, one is that uh, we're going to move up the uh, town library roof um, discussion, and it's just a brief discussion. I just wanted to bring the select board up to let them know what what is being planned for that for that project. Um, and the reason I did that is so that Brett could be a part of it. Um, she gets to go to another Zoom meeting at seven, I think. Oh, so. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Lucky yeah. her. Kind of an exciting night here. <laughs> and then um, I just got, there was an email when I got, I just got home about 20 minutes ago. So um, there was an email from Brandy that she won't be able to attend tonight. Okay. okay. So we won't have a town treasurer's report. Um, yeah, and that's any other adjustments at all? I have one. I just don't know if I'm muted or not. You're on. I can hear you, so I guess you are. You hear me? Okay. Um, there was just an issue about the possible use of the town hall that uh, Robin threw out a couple weeks ago, and I don't know if that was ever discussed or decided. We we could discuss that. I never did respond to that. Um, I had yeah. Okay. So use of town hall. Okay. Anything else at all for to add to the agenda? Nothing for me. Okay. Any public comment? Sounds pretty quiet. Okay. So, um, um, did Paul and Brian, did you get a chance to look at the bills today at the town? Yes, office? I just went down there around 4.30. Okay. Yep, I okay. didn't. Yep. Okay. I, I went down last evening and I didn't see any of the payroll, but um, it's there now. Okay, so if you if you two got to review it and were okay with it, um, could the I AP, could a, a, AP and payroll down there? Okay, so do I hear a motion to approve the rules? So moved. A second. second. All second. in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, and I'll get down and and <clears throat> sign off on the payroll tomorrow. Um, so then, um, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes for our November 9th select board meeting? Come on, Brian. Right. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so um, let's move right on to the town library roof. And um, just briefly, um, in, uh, in doing the work, um, you know, preparing um, for the uh, school lease, um, it became apparent to us that the, um, or was made known to, to the committee that the uh, town library roof is badly in need of reshingling. Mm. So, um, and I just wanted, uh, Paul and Brian, I wanted to let you know that, that we'll probably want to plan that for the uh, fiscal year 22's budget. And right. I haven't done anything to contact any contractors um, so I don't know, I don't have any idea of estimates, but you know, I'll get on that um, quickly. I was wondering if anybody knew of roofing contractors or local folks or, you know, just some ideas on who we could, who we could approach about um, the roofing. Obviously, if it's going to be more than $8,000, we got to put it out to bid. Um, if it's seems like it could be less than that we could just do our due diligence and get um, estimates from you know a number of contractors and then choose from from what we what we hear from folks um, do you think larry eldred could give us a ballpark number on that so we would kind of know if we were above or below or not i uh, i would would imagine he could yeah um, and Brett, I know that you had some concerns and, and, Jack, and Jack is also, you know, Jack is a library trustee. Mm -hmm. So I assume that they're, they're here to maybe talk about this a little bit too. So um, feel free, Jack or Brett, to, you know, anything but, that you want to add to this discussion. Uh, I'll let Brett mostly, go first. Oh, go ahead, Jack. No, no, go ahead. Uh, one of my concerns was the method for funding the roof, like who would be paying the bill for it? the town will be paying the bill for mm -hmm. it okay yep. all right that was really my main question and mm -hmm. um just making sure like the time frame as it goes forward who's ever in the library just notify them 
Of, of course, the library will definitely be kept in. in yes. Yeah. Yeah. What I mean, my thinking on the plan is to get an you know get a, a estimate from Larry, get a hold of some roofing contractors, um, get and have a decision made. Um, if not um, before the town budget, at least we would have an idea of how much to put into the budget for the project. And then during the course of the winter, um, pick a contractor and with the plan of, of putting a new roof on there next summer. Yes. That, does that sound logical, Paul and Brian? To yes, us? absolutely. Okay. okay. Michael, yes. can I say a few words? Sure. Um, just in terms of cost, I, I think one, one unknown is the condition of the subroof under the shingles. Mm -hmm. The shingles are visibly deteriorated now and right. the soffit and uh, fascia boards are starting to rot away. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you won't know that until they peel the old roof off, but it's right. something to keep in mind okay. you know, for added yeah. cost. Yeah, we ran into that with the school roof. They ended up with some change orders. I, I, I think yeah. we can probably assume uh, by looking that a lot of the fascia will have to be replaced and plan for that. And that's, probably that's a build, definite. Yeah, yeah that, build that some, some square footage of uh, plywood replacement potentially into that bid and then just assume we may have some change orders potentially depending on the unknown. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, so, yeah. the, good, the good news is right now it's not leaking inside the building. But okay, that answers my question. I was going to say, is it leaking anywhere right yeah. now? <laughs> it's in, you know, and it's impossible <laughs> to predict when that might start happening. But I would, right. I would feel real good about replacing the roof within the next twelve months. And yeah. you know, beyond that, we may run into more expense. Yeah, we definitely need to do that. That's got to yeah. get done. Yeah. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. No okay. problem. Yeah. Thank you. Same on my end. Thank you very okay. much. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. Any anything else about the the library roof? Do we know okay, who's so, contacting who? Just so we um, have a. I will contact Larry. Okay. Um, and uh, maybe he and I will maybe try to get together and just look at the roof. I'll get an an estimate from him so that we have a. And I'll try to get an estimate that that might um, take in any subsurface work and and the fascia, which definitely that's obviously needs to be replaced when you look at it. Yeah. Um, so I'll get an estimate from him and then. Um, if anybody has any thoughts on who I should contact, um, he may. Larry may have some contacts through his Larry, school district stuff. True, yeah. Didn't we do an RFP on the uh, roof replacement just a yeah, year ago? Yeah, we that's could pick the, through that's that. That's the school, right? But, but we may be able to use uh, have those other contractors exactly. come and look we at could. it. We could. Yeah, we could. They tend to do. They tend to do larger projects, but maybe they maybe they might be interested. Work. Yeah, they might be interested. They did a good job on the roof. We, we had our confusions, but that wasn't all their fault. Okay. Uh, so, Michael, maybe as you go forward for the library trustee contact, maybe Jack could just be the contact for that? Sure. I'd yeah. be happy to. Yeah, I know how to get a hold of him. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, Brett, before you're gone, uh, you know, um, just uh, on behalf of the town, I want to thank you for being our librarian for these many years. And um, certainly we'll miss you and, and the, especially the programs that you had going there. I mean, I remember sitting in once on a Saturday morning with the children's program. It was great. So, yes, thank you. Those, yeah, thank you. Yep, thank you. We'll miss you. It's going to be hard to replace. Really? It's yes. been a pleasure. And, yeah. yeah. It's been a pleasure. I, Thank you. I look, I look forward to your second novel. <laughs> <laughs> I assume it's in the works. <clears throat> yeah, next year. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So right. I guess we'll move on. Okay. Um, I'll sign off here. Bye. We're going to sign off. Bye. bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you both. Bye, everyone. <laughs> so Diane, I guess we're I guess ready we're... for the town clerk's report. Okay. Well, my new assistant started today. Uh huh. You don't think she was totally bored? I had her filing some cards and other mindless things, but you know. She hasn't <laughs> quit yet, then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, I expect a quiet week with Thanksgiving and the office yeah. being closed. I don't yeah. have any appointments for any title searchers yet. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
I'm still a month behind in my land record recording and I'm, I don't know, I hope maybe Friday I can put in a few extra hours and would really love to get caught up on that before I start on the town uh, report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if somebody could give me an extra couple of days in the week, <laughs> I can <could laughs> use it. Okay, so uh, last week I started something I've been wanting to do for 10 years and I finally figured out how to do it. It wasn't that tough. It was an email blast, which would give us an opportunity to send out official town news and notices to people who might not be on Facebook or who, you know, things can go on front porch forum, but then they're gone the next day. So this will give people an email that they can keep on their, you know, they can keep it or they can discard it. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have a count of how many names I have because I took it from everybody who has had email with the town. Uh -huh. ever with the since I've had this computer and I probably got a hundred names off there and then I sent out a front porch forum notice to other people who might not uh, have been on my list already and got another 30 requests today mm -hmm. so I'll be updating that and Skip Marcusani thought that some of the Greenwood Lake people might like to be on the list so there I got another 10 or so requests from them today Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's uh, going to be something fun. I mean, mostly interesting. Not, I mean, I might post a dog missing, but otherwise it's going to be town business. And the way it's set up is that uh, it's really a one way. If somebody wants to respond to me, they can, but it's not going to be a, something where you can reply to everyone and have it. Oh, that, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be a list serv, it's just going to be an email. So I got all the election paperwork and state requirements wrapped up finally. Uh, you want to talk about the town hall now or? Sure. Yeah. The only question Robin had, had was, you know, whether, whether it should be uh, stopped for now. Well, I think that's kind of what the state is recommending is that there are no gatherings, you know, other than immediate family. Um, so it kind of makes sense that, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of what I told Robin, we talked about it. So that's kind of my yeah. feeling. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the only thing I had in the book between now and the end of December was fire department and select board meetings. Right, which yeah. we've, we've gone remote with our stuff for the short term here, probably for yeah. the next month, so. Yeah, okay. and we'll, we'll be, the select board will be remote for, an equal duration depending on what kind of guidance we get. Yeah, we'll have to see how January goes, but we'll play <laughs> it by ear. Okay. It is nice to be in a warm space without a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. Okay. Any questions right. on the day to day operations of the town office? You, you've pretty much gone back to the mode of having the building the locked and people making appointments and all right. of that. I mean, if people knock on the door, we'll answer the door. And if we can help them, we will. Yeah. But yeah, basically anybody mm -hmm. coming from out of town needs to make an appointment. Yeah. That's why they already kind of knew that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're kind of back to where we were. Um, earlier this spring yeah. when you know during the election period and tax payment we got kind of lax about just letting people come in with their stuff that's mm -hmm. all over now so. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah the door is locked and the guard dog is on the other side right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. okay so so robin are you are you okay with that just Kind of shutting down the town hall for. Yes. I said, yeah, I assumed you might would be, but just wanted to check. Okay. So, what do you want me to have the temperature set at between now and whenever? The 55? Or do you want it higher than that? Uh, 55 makes sense just so the pipes don't freeze. Yeah, just so the pipes don't freeze. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and, Paul, do you want to shut the water off for now? I will do that. So, if we have really cold weather, we don't have a freeze up that floods mm -hmm. the place. That okay. Sounds good. 
No. Okay. Okay. So, um, anything else? Um, any questions for Diana as a town clerk or any, Diana, do you have anything else that you want to add? Uh, not, not until we get to the next. Okay. Oh, I did send you today. I did get a final report, a closeout report on the FEMA grant. I saw that. I haven't had a chance yeah. to look at it, but I saw it. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. That's good. It must mean they, I mean, they were talking about having to do a final inspection and whether or not they could do that digitally or somebody with a camera. I guess they finally got over that. I mean, it's nothing. There's nothing there. Right. Bye bye. <laughs> Out the window. <laughs> You're they right. could drive by or something. Yeah, they didn't wanted. need to come from Boston for that. They yeah. probably would have had to quarantine. Wouldn't have been worth the time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anything, Paul or Brian? Any questions for Diana? No, I'm no. good. I'm good. Okay, so let's move on to um, the town meeting 2020. And Diana, do you want to just kind of lead us through that? Um, sure. Well, the first thing I checked into, I mean, when we discussed this at one of our meetings recently, I was waiting to get uh, uh, instruction and direction from the Secretary of State's office. Come to find out, we already had instructions and directions uh, through Vermont League of Cities and Towns. The legislature did make changes that I hadn't kept up with. <coughs> so, uh, First, I called the superintendent's office and they said that they're not allowing anyone to use their facility, mm -hmm. any outside group. So we can you can't use the school. Right. Certainly can't fit people in the town hall for a sit down meeting. So the option is to go to uh, Australian ballot meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so I sent you an email a <coughs> ago with some motions that the town, if you decide, you can talk about it for a while, but if you want to okay. and uh, make the motions to go to Australian ballot for the uh, election and for the uh, budgets and for any other um, public questions that might come up right. in the meantime. I don't know if there are going to be any of those this year or not. Right. So. Um, would you mind if we made that vote um, at our next select board meeting so it can be actually written into the uh, agenda so people are aware that, and you know, this discussion that we have this evening will, if people see the meeting, um, they can get a, a sense of what we are, you know, thinking of doing. Um, and then we could actually have an inevitability. A, yeah, and we'll, so we'll have it like officially warned at the next right. meeting so that, um, um, that would People. give us plenty of time. I'll continue to work in that direction anyways, because right. I think, like Paul said, it is inevitable. It is inevitable. Uh, I, yeah. who want I don't even think we're allowed to use the school. Right. They, they already said no. I checked with the superintendent. Ah, yeah. okay. um, Unless we're going to stand outside, and, you know, six feet right. apart. And <laughs> so I, I, and, no, okay. I did read, um, you know, I read the, the, uh, um, VLCT thing that you sent a link to. Um, and it, you know, if we're going to be doing Australian ballot, and I think we're in agreement that we will be. Um, Brian, do you, do you think that's the best route to go? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right. So I just don't like, see that we have a choice. I don't know don't what the alternative choice. would be. I yeah. agree. We don't have a choice. Yeah. So what we do have to do is have an informational meeting, and we can do that via Zoom. Well, we can also do what we usually do is the Thursday night before town meeting day, have something at the town hall. Well, no, hardly anybody ever comes. So I don't I know, know why you um, would think that there's going to be more. <laughs> more yeah. Um, well, I guess we, we would have to. We could fit 20 or 30 people in there. We just have to warn. We have to warn that information. We have to warn it 10, 10, day, 10 days <clears throat> ahead of time. My thought was, you know, if we did try a Zoom meeting, and I'm not advocating one way or the other, um, just when I read that, um, you know, we could see if um, uh, HCTV would be willing to host the Zoom, and then it would be recorded, and people could watch it um, on their own time, 
before town meeting. So say people couldn't come to the town hall when we actually had a meeting, um, you know, it would be available for people to see on the, the website or um, on the TV station um, if we did go that route. Obviously there are people that, you know, being able to connect via computer in town that that would be a, a difficulty. So, but they, are they probably- a combination of both. We could, we could have the meeting recorded, that's true. And you know, we could, um, I guess we could wait and see what's happening in the world by, um, well, you know, if we have to, if we have to warn it 10 days ahead of time, obviously the informational meeting, you know, uh, might not be warned in the town report. Right. Um, well, it usually is though. So we could, we could just pick it. This time. Yeah, okay. Um, but how do we know what, when we, you know, at the middle of January, when the town report needs to get sent to the publisher, how do we know what the COVID world will be like two months. Well, that's why I, really I think can't we're expect any different, any big changes. Yeah, I think what we're going to have to do, Michael, is I, I think personally it'll have to be a Zoom meeting, and we'll just have to send it out that way in the town report. Okay. I don't know. Kind of, me as well. I agree with Diana. It's probably not going to be super amount of people attending, but who knows? Right. But no. Usually, at least we could warn it. Yeah. Okay. So. So we're thinking that the informational meeting would be via Zoom. I'm thinking that. At this point, okay. All right, yep. so we'll warn it that way. Um, there may be more people. Be oh, interesting. No. Everything, everything that people will have to vote on will be in the town report. Yes. Right. They'll yep. get that 10 days, you know, right. more than 10 days, probably. Okay. Two weeks so, um, the same time. so strategy wise, we should probably go through the list of people who are up for election and right. check in with them right. um, so that we know. And then if they are thinking that they wouldn't um, want to serve on another term, we should probably also announce that so that people who might be interested have a chance to get their name on the ballot. Um, yep. So that's- And we want, want to get that notice that. out that if you want to run for a position, uh, we need to know before the January so that we can get a name in the report. Right. People who want to run, they have to uh, they have to first make a request to be on the ballot. They don't have to do a petition. That's another. There thing. you go. Okay. But once they've requested to be on the ballot, I'll send them send them this consent of candidate form. Yeah, I did did read that. So there is a system. Consent yep. to be on the ballot, right? And then yep. if nobody runs, you know, or if some somebody might mount a write-in campaign, they mm -hmm. have to get a certain amount of votes for it to be valid. I don't know if it's 30 or what, but then it's other, probably a the certain alternative percentage. is that the select board has to appoint. Yeah, okay. Brian? Yeah. Oh, I just saw your, your uh, box light up, so I was wondering oh. if you had no. a thought. No, okay. Um, so any, can you, can you think of anything else that we need to kind of prepare for in order to do this? Um, I guess it'd be we quite should, a night of counting when we have the end of the day, you gotta go count all the votes. Well, we've got our tabulator now. Yeah, that brings can we up use up the tabulator? Point. What? Can we use the tabulator? Probably not. No, it's, too no. Oh. it's not worth it. Okay. But uh, what I wanna know is whether it would be okay to put all the, um, appropriations in one article because that way we don't have to count 20 different things at the end of the day. I know I tried to do that a couple of years ago and people didn't like it, but still every year Paul or somebody says, let's combine these. Yeah. I mean, I suppose we can turn it any way we want. It would go up or down as a group. So. Right. So I would say it would yes. Make, would it make sense to put it in as a group, one budget item? Yeah, I think so, but it would we'll all have... be listed. You know. Yeah, I would say yes as well. It's going to be a lot easier by when Oscar it comes to counting, right? Because when you go to counting, it's going to be a lot of counting. Right. Well, there'll be a vote for the general fund budget. There'll be the highway budget. There'll be probably six or seven elections. Um, You're muted, Mike. Oh, there's the fire department budget and the 
Is that one or two articles? I don't remember. Usually yeah. two right now. Yeah, I can I can think of a couple other things that would be uh, voted on. Um, so, but we'll we, we have time to figure that out. So while we're kind of talking about all this, and now that we're in Zoom mode, um, I'm just kind of wondering how does the select board want to proceed um, in? Um, I guess this is an adjustment to the agenda, but you know we we we're usually have a few meetings to work on the budget. Mm -hmm. And um, do we want to try to do that on Zoom? I think what I'd like to try to do, I'm trying to figure out how to be a host uh, for Zoom so we could use a town Zoom account and also learn how to share the screen so that we could be looking at the budget on the screen and together via Zoom to discuss the budget. Does that sound like? I think it works as long as we can make it work. I mean, we should, I think okay. the first meeting we should try because okay. the, the issue is, I'm not uncomfortable with meeting with the two of you, but there's a if, if a lot of other people showed up, then it creates our an issue for us. Whoop. And that's the same for you me. Just, I wouldn't mind meeting with just every, uh -oh. us. That's me, isn't it? Yeah. In person? So everybody just froze up for a minute. I didn't quite hear everything that you said. Oh, my, it so, says so, my inner, oh, shoot. Then soak up to, the internet. Soak up okay. your internet. <laughs> it, it, the warning went away, so maybe I'm good. It does that once in a while. <clears throat> So what I had said, Mike, Michael, was I don't have a problem with meeting with you and Brian in person. The problem okay. is it's a public meeting and we right. can't really regulate who comes in. I'm not terribly terrified by that, but I don't want to put anyone else in an uncomfortable position. So if people are more comfortable meeting via Zoom, then I think it's worth trying one time and see if we can okay. do it. Well, I will do, what I'd like to do is do a couple practice runs. Um, a leaf is offered to help and and skip Lindsay has too so i can sort of feel somewhat confident that i could actually um mc the whole thing without a lot of screwing up um then <laughs> we'll do it but it's it's all i haven't had the greatest luck so far but and then chuck i had a question for you um you know usually for the town highway budget i've gone down to the town garage and sat with um uh, Greg to to work it out. I'm wondering if um, you know the three of us could meet, or if you wanted to meet with Greg and just go over the budget, and then and then you know meet with a select board to work on the budget. Um, I know you want to be done here pretty soon, and um, and I don't know if you're headed to Florida or not, but I just want to you know usually this happens uh, into the end of December and very early january that we're actually coming and we up could actually time. move that up if if chuck needs to get out of town yeah, well, that's what i was thinking that maybe um you know if 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 um you know i would love i really feel that we should have you involved in forming that budget um yep. and i'm thinking that you could meet with um i'm not sure when greg parkhurst will back be back on the road crew but if you and he wanted to meet, um, or um, I, I would be happy to be there too. Um, but it, you know, usually you, I know Greg always had a sense of, you know, what what was needed to be spent, and um, so I would I would certainly want input from the two of you to on the town highway budget. Otherwise, you know, at this point we're just kind of guessing at at stuff. Oh, you're. You're muted right at the moment, Chuck. You, you got to un, undo your mic. Can Leaf unmute him? Uh, she's coming to do that right now, I can see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there that? you go. You're in. There we that go. That looks good. <laughs> All right. Let me get rid of that. There we go. <laughs> so what are your thoughts, Chuck? Um, yeah, um, sometime next week we'll be probably headed for Florida. Okay. Meeting or something like that. I'd be more than glad to be involved in it from there. And okay. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so, so we'll try to do a Zoom meeting and maybe, um, I don't know if the laptop at the garage has a video capability or not, but, um, and, and Michael, my feeling is since we're going to be doing it via Zoom, even if Chuck's in Florida, we can still do the meeting. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, I, that's what I mean. Um, we're just trying to figure out how to include Greg Parkers because um, I think he can do it from home. He okay. Can do it from home. Right. Yep. okay, I'll check in with him about that. And, yeah, um, he's been in our meetings before from home. Okay, all right, that's right. I remember now. Okay, so um, so we'll <clears throat> and I and will I'll, learn how to do this so we can do that. <laughs> I will touch base. We we've talked about it quite a lot, and we've got some ideas. Okay. Okay, good. But, uh, yeah. I'll touch base with him before we have a Zoom meeting about it, and okay, get okay. on a, so we're both on the same page. Okay, yeah, that's what I that's what I want is you two on the same page, and then and yeah. then we'll put it on the uh, budget page. Okay, um, all right. Sounds like we have an idea of how to move forward with all of that. Um, so, Diana, I will make sure that the the select board voting for Australian ballot will happen at the next next meeting. Okay. Maybe send out an email blast to everybody in your blast list and let people know that that's what's happening. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next meeting will be the 14th of December. Yeah. So we're we're getting. There's one of those three week gaps. Oh yeah, there is, isn't there? Yep. So we should probably by then we should be starting to work on the budget too. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully that'll be a significant part of our next select board meeting. Um, yeah. Good. So. Yeah. Okay. Anything else about uh, town meeting day, Diana? Uh, I did print out your email. I think that's pretty much. I think, you know, maybe just getting, I'm happy to look at the elected officials that are, whose terms are up and contact them and find out yay or nay from them. And then, um, you know, we should, I'll, and I will do that this week. Um, and then, you know, through our various means of getting the word out, we'll, you know, any, any positions that are, appear to be open, we'll kind of source for, um, volunteers or people that are interested um yeah we won't be able to troll the audience like we sometimes do at town right right Suckers. yeah so we'll need to know people will need to let us know ahead of time and and i have from your notes what what they would need to do in order to uh, i would probably just have them contact you or, or me or um and then well, we'll they'll need to send in a request a written right. request please and then i'll send them the consent form okay all right so we'll get on that right off. Um, okay. Anything else at all? Okay. So um, let's see, I got my bar agenda buried here. So um, I know that even though we aren't having a town treasurer's report, um, Randy had mentioned at our last select board meeting um, to for uh, uh, interim auditor to finish out um, Robin's term for this year till town meeting um, and the select board would appoint that person. Um, Vicki Abear, is that right? Mason, Vicki Mason. Mason, Mason, right. Yeah, so, um, and Brandy had mentioned that Vicki Mason is interested in, in doing that, um, being appointed an interim auditor. Um, is there any discussion over that at all? Has she been contacted and is willing? Uh, Brandy indicated at the last meeting that yes, she has been contacted and, and is willing. Yep. She would also really have to stand for an, an election also. Yes. Yep. Yeah, she would be standing for election in March at the town meeting. Yep. Yeah. And I would assume she would, the years of her term at town meeting would be the years remaining in, in uh, Robin's, Robin's term. term. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do any discussion at all? Any more discussion about this? There is another, the other auditor that's up for re-election this year is Susan Martin and we don't really know if she's interested. Right, well, I'll, I'll contact her. Could you, Diana, could you, um, I could look at the town report, but maybe I'll make a list and I'll send it to you. And could you just confirm that I have everything correct? That's yeah, pretty clear. I, are, I went through that also. Okay, all right, okay. Bob Martin is up for Lister. Um, Susan Martin, for, um, Richard Patton for library, 
for um, yeah, cemetery commission. Okay, all right. Uh, well, library, I never know until the last minute who's going to be on the list. So. Right, I'll I, I can ask Jack about that. Mm -hmm. So, so um, do I hear a motion to appoint um, Vicki Mason as the interim auditor until town meeting day, um, 2021? I'll move that motion. Okay. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So Vicki Mason is our interim auditor um, till uh, town meeting day. All right. Um, town highway report. Well, um, we, in the last two weeks, we honed all the roads again. We got them back up into shape where they're pretty decent. If it don't get too soft, we'll be in good shape. Um, I think Dave and Laura Massell maybe uh, tuned into the meeting here. Uh, yep. Met with them about putting tractor signs up both sides of the driveway on Valley Lake Road, and we did uh, that. Okay. Then they approached me about um, said mm -hmm. that they had talked to somebody, and I forgot who they had talked to about fixing the hill up there by Winston's, by the corner, then the steep right. hill then by Winston's. I know someone spoke to Greg Parkhurst about this a year or even more ago. Um, so I don't yeah. know if it was them or not. Um, I don't know either, but they're very interested in it. I've met with them twice. Okay. Uh, they'd like to see it happen. I All told right. them that it would be a matter of seeing a few folks or you, the select board is interested in doing it and then we'd have to proceed into finding a grant. Yeah, um, my my thoughts on that project would be that um, are are they? And I know Laura is here, I think. Um, but um, do they own all of the property that the this new road would be on? Um, Hi, uh, we are on on the call, and we'll unzoom, okay. we'll unmute, and all of that. Okay. Just a second. Okay, great. Our Hello. lighting is wrong for this. Hello, how are you? Okay. Yeah. So, so, where are we talking about changing the road to? Um, I'll let. Well, I don't. I mean, Greg Parkhurst has a pretty good idea, but if um, if yeah, the Marcells have an, an idea of it, also maybe they could share that with us because I'm not totally sure. So. Um, I, I'll follow Chuck's lead. Um, the, okay. Chuck and I have met twice and he, we walked out into the meadow and he has, he has a very good idea of how to correct that pr problem. Uh, okay. I, so, um, you know, at some point, if we, if it, if it comes to this and there is the money and the project goes forward, then or Laura and I can be brought in to, uh, just make a request or two about how our driveway intersects. But in terms of the road, that's Chuck. Okay, so, but this this road proposal is, is it entirely on your property? Yes. Okay, yes. so we're dealing with one property owner, that'll help. Yeah. Um, so my knowledge of what the town needs to do, and I can look into this, is that we would have to have it, a, whatever plan for where the road is, it would have to be staked out and then we would, need to have it um, officially surveyed. Sure. Um, and then we would have to go through the process of either, either before or after of laying out the road. Hiring an engineer. Yeah, we should probably hire an engineer to make sure that everything is done right. Um, so it is an expense and, but you know, I agree that if we could solve, that is one of the worst places in town. Yeah. Matter of fact, it is the worst place in town. We'd be looking to remove that sharp corner in the steep, steep part of the hill. Yeah, I'm looking at it on Google Earth right now. They, they, that would be great. Uh, so I, I'm all for moving ahead on, on um, you know, making this happen. It may take a few steps to do, um, you yeah. know, um, we, we may like to concur with you, Mike, that we'd want to follow the whole laying out process to the T yeah. so we don't end up with yeah. another problem. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and we would just to have that be designated as a town highway that would have to happen. Um, yeah. So like, you know, maybe next summer, um, we could have an engineer um, talk to Chuck and, and, you know, Chuck could give him 
share his ideas. Yeah. The two of them could come up with uh, a design. Um, that would be one step. And then what, you know, once that's done, we probably could stake it out. Um, so the surveyor could do their thing. So maybe that would be next summer's mm -hmm. project. Um, and clearing the trees, if there are trees that need to be cleared, I, you know, there's a um, few. A few. There's okay. A few. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot though. It's not like going through the woods or anything. Okay. No, so that's... Probably a hundred feet worth. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know if we'd be able to get a grant for it or not. We could look into that. Um, and I know who to ask, um, I think. So we could look into that, you know, r right off really just to start I think planning. Yeah. Can help us on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there would be whether the, our road crew would do the work um, of forming that road or whether we would want to contract it out. Um, you know, that would be a question for the ongoing discussion. Um, you know, um, so I could see this maybe taking a couple years, um, yeah. but there's no reason we can't start. Start working on it. Yeah, start working on it. Yeah, it's, it's, our, it's our feeling that it's not so much that we're looking for a, a different road. I mean, right. we can get up, we've got up and down our road and, and all of that. It was more mm -hmm. to, um, a combination really of, is this a moment where the town would have a chance to solve one of its vexing problems? Right. Well, uh, I know I know that off and on I've had talks with Greg Parkhurst about this for a couple of years now. Yeah. And I know many people that just consider that a very dangerous place to um Yeah, we don't the fire department doesn't go that way unless the fire is there. Yeah. It's that wow. bad. I know one time when I was filling in for a road crew member, mm -hmm. I was plowing that road and going downhill and um I had just made it past the corner when I met a truck going up and I was yeah. really That's thankful that it there wasn't a 30 second or yeah. difference in time because um, I would have met them right on the corner. Yeah. Um, we had a fire at the house at the very bottom of the hill up on the right on top of the hill right after a snowstorm and it was heartburn city because yeah. I had to go that way and it was not fun ride down the back side of the hill. Yeah. 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 So so yeah to, to be able to eliminate that corner um, would be a real benefit to the town. It and looks like a lot of work, but actually, in reality, there isn't that much work there. Okay, well, you, you know, no, I'm looking at it on the map it. there. Looks like it could be relatively easily done. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's great. It, so. it seems to me there may be the most cost just associated with getting it done legally and some engineering exactly. and actual work isn't that bad. Yeah, getting mm -hmm. the engineering there and, and the, the surveying and the stuff, I think, is going to be the most costly part. Or the laying out part. Right. Yeah. So, right. was it anything? Was anything done like this to a point at, in the past, or is it, it, has it just been <laughs> talked about? I don't know um, if I It really never was really talked about all that much because the landowner had no interest in letting it happen. Right. And so that land order was Winston Moore? That's right. Okay, okay. okay. And then when it went into the, the trust, of course, they couldn't do anything with it anyway. Got okay. it. Okay. But it's obvious to us that it's a <laughs> it's, it's a it's problem, a problem. <laughs> that, that the town would like to solve. Yes, yes. Be done so that our driveway entry and exit is also safer, all the better. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. I mean it'd be we, a win win situation for everybody. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah, we agree. I know that the select board just briefly last winter or maybe before last winter talked about, you know, could we close that road during the winter? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, really? Yeah, yeah. That's from, how bad it is. From the you know from the last houses down coming down the hill and from the last house going up the hill. Um, yeah. So yeah, to fix this that corner would be a real a real benefit to to the town. Definitely. Can I can I just add one one small item? Sure. Can I talk this through as well? Which is aside from the safety, I do also wonder if the in the grant, it might be made clear that there's an environmental component to fix here too. There's All the a washout. Bunch of sediment going into that creek, right. which the headwaters of the Winooski. And I, I can't imagine in the year 2020, that being an okay thing if the state is aware of it. It's not an okay thing. And that's where we might be able yes. to get some grant money. 
because it is yeah. hydraulically can hydro is it hydraulically yeah. hydraulically connected yeah. is the word? Yeah. that's right and exactly. I, I can i can look into that pretty pretty quickly you know because right. i know we've kind of had that the road the way it is now on on the list to work on for that very reason um great but uh i you know mentioning making a new road i'm, I'm not quite sure what the uh, powers that be that have that those purse strings would think of that but uh, if it's solving a problem erosion problem um yeah if if not through the one particular grant that we've used there might be um something else available and mm -hmm. the folks that i would talk with would know that so great right. yeah. Okay. yeah so we'll keep we'll get on this and you know just start moving forward on it and, and thank you and thank you to chuck thanks, for big ch thank you to chuck yeah thanks to chuck yes. Yeah. Yep. You're very welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll sign off. All right, have a good night. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving. You as Thank well. You. Good. Well, we'll 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 um, keep you posted on that, Chuck. And you're down yeah. in uh, sunny Florida. <laughs> <laughs> we should move our meetings down there. That's what I think. Yeah, come on down. Come on down. We got a big carport down there. We can we can be six feet apart down there. Right. <laughs> and we could sit outside even. Yeah. Right. Um, so anything else, Chuck, that you'd? Um, we've not really. I guess uh, okay. the roads are in pretty good. Like I say, are in pretty good shape. Um, I've mm -hmm. had some complaints from about the boys not getting around and being behind the school buses on the school bus routes, but I guess we're going to talk about that later anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it probably next, actually. Yeah. Um, just so that you know, I, I've heard that the school, after Thanksgiving, once they go on break for Thanksgiving, there will be no school in session until, at this point, um, December 14th. And if okay. the you know if the pandemic is still kind of raging here in Vermont, my guess is that they probably wouldn't reopen until after the first of the year. Mm -hmm. So the issue of the school buses might go away. It will go away for a couple of weeks here. Um, right. But um, yeah. So um, we'll you know we'll I'll follow that and and we'll definitely keep the road crew up to speed on what's happening with that. Right. I know they used, they used to get notices from the supervisor or union that would come right to the computer or even a phone call. I, I yeah, I haven't seen anything like that. And I was talking okay. to Greg Adams about it today and he didn't say anything about it. But so they, I'm not you, sure. They, they used to come to me too and I haven't seen anything either. So okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, next on you know on the agenda for the town highway report was just to go over oh, that. Diana's got her hand Diana. up. Diana, yeah. I wanted to mention um, this, the uh, stipend that we get from um, Swenson. Yes. The use of the road. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's been increased since they uh, started. Well, they haven't started using the upper part of the road, but they probably will next year. Um, and I'm not sure it's been changed uh, since they went to year round. So it might be nice if the road guys kept track of more, you know, kept better track of how many extra runs they have to make up there. I'm okay. sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear what, what which road you were talking about. I was talking about the money that we get from Swenson for the uh, oh, additional yes. efforts on the road. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because it, I don't think it's been increased in a while. I don't. I, I know their objection to increasing it was they wanted to see an accounting of of why. Right. You know, if we're going to increase, right. we need to show that we've exceeded the funds that they've provided for that work. Right. right. And I know, um, you know, back with our former road foreman uh, Harry uh, Daly, he was going to start keeping a record of that, but I don't believe it ever happened. Um, so. Um, Certainly. Yeah, we could. When they start using the rest of the, the yeah, road. a lot more road to treat. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know that um, Chuck has mentioned um, regrading the upper part of the Cabot Road as a project for next summer. Well, we need to resurface that. it. Resurface it. That's, that's, what, mm -hmm. I that's yeah. what I meant to say. That's what I meant to say. But not paving. You mean 
more no gravity. no not paving no no oh. we're not gonna go go that way not yet <laughs> not yet <laughs> i'm sure they'll be back for some more of that right <laughs> yeah we, but but it, it, it definitely needs to be resurfaced and ditched yeah. Yeah, so that's something I think we're kind of planning on for next summer for work to resurface it you know, okay. and, ditch, and the ditching on it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. just to keep that in mind, so we can, if, if at some point we can put together a, a reasoned request for uh, more money. Right, and I know yeah. we had kind of anticipated more money based on the the present rate because they were going to be extracting more, but that well, that's I haven't seen much change in, in their no. extraction rate either. So, well, I'm afraid you will next summer because next summer you're going to put two two crews on. Okay, right. and we'll then you'll get more money, money because they're obviously taking more stone. Right. Yeah. And yeah. another thing I think that the town needs to think about is uh, you're only getting paid for usable stone that's coming off right. that hill. Right. And then the the unusable stone is doing just as much damage to that hill as the usable stone is. Yeah, but that's that's how they do their accounting: is how many cubic feet of granite they get out of each block. If we if we, and they don't have a, I don't think they have a scale up there. No, uh, they they measure it though. They know what how many cubic feet there is in that block. Right, but do they know how much? You know, the total volume minus the number of cubic feet. I'd, that would just mean they would pay less per cubic foot. I mean, uh, if we want well, uh, to I would, measure every every polygon or whatever you would call it <laughs> mathematically. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, but I would stay. I would want to stay the same price at least and get paid for every cubic foot that comes off the hill. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's a discussion we can have in the future with them. Um, right. Yeah, I think it's come up before. Yeah. I, mean, I know they they've, could, they've fought us historically on any of that stuff, so we need to have our act together before we approach them with that. Yeah, so oh. you know, if we, if we think that we want to do that, we probably should start keeping a record of, you know, plowing, sanding, um and That's what they've paper. asked for. Yeah. Yeah, and which it has also, has not happened. Um, we, we did we did have the plan to do that, but it never really came to fruition well i can start getting that implemented tomorrow yeah. okay because yeah. that way we'll have something to work with we've had degraded x amount of times this many times it got sanded it got you know so right. we're spending more than more than what we're getting and i think that's what they're looking for they just don't want to simply come into them and say we would just want more money right they, they want we, they want some figures to back up our request right and that's reasonable that road that's road reasonable road. yeah i agree yeah we graded that road a lot this year yes yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. how many times they get called out specially like they did already last week one time. Right, right. when they can't yeah. get up the hill, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, right. sure. Okay, All right. You. Okay. Um, so do, do we want to go over the winter operations policy? I know we had talked about that last time. Yeah. And this, this policy was um, put together back when Harry was the road foreman. Um, he, he and I kind of put it together. And it was meant mostly to to be for um, the information of the town residents. Um, so it's not so much about what the road crew will do in the winter, but it does, of course, it does define what they're doing. But it was meant more for town residents. Um, so, um, but we can add. I know we had wanted to to have in there, um, you know, on a stormy, wintry day. Um, that the road crew uh, make a, an evening pass for people that are coming home from work. You know that there that when there's heavy snowstorms, that there is this final six, right. seven o'clock um, plowing uh, of, of the roads. You look at uh, number seven. Yeah. After twelve hours on the job, a road crew may stop operations in order to get a minimum of six hours rest. Mm -hmm. And then you look back up in here, and you the at most most times they start at four o'clock. Yeah, they work till three thirty. Mm -hmm. So you you sort of shot yourself in the foot right there. Right. Um, when the three come in first thing in the morning, <clears throat> it seems to me that whoever's the, the odd man out should be um, 
sent home and brought back in in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Like when you expect there's going to be snow, yes. Yes. Yeah, makes more sense. Right, because I realize what the we said in the policy, but I think we should should at least keep people on the roads for the time the policy indicates. I do yeah. too. I, yeah. I agree with you 100%, but I'm just saying that with yeah. number six, you sort of short of such foot because you can't expect them to stay out after 12 hours. Right, right. so someone's going to have to shift hours, correct? Yeah. So I think what we could try to do is work out a plan that we would like them to go by on the, you know, mostly just the days where there's a heavy snowstorm and right. it's going to be snowing all day. It's going to be snowing into the oh, night. Right. Yeah. So it or it's quite be, common for it to you get a couple inches that come in at between two and four. It didn't snow all day and we really need to have yeah. them go out and treat the road. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I, most of our complaints from residents come in trying to get home after Correct. in the evening. Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't want to be working and getting home at seven o'clock at night, and not be able to get home either. Right. right. And then we're having to go out with the fire trucks and the ambulance at night. And there are many, many times we're not roads, not plowed and sanded. Right. right. And it, so it, it it's, as much, it's as much a safety issue as anything else. Yeah. Too, so I would, that's, that is a way that I would go about it, that it was a safety issue. Yes. Yeah. So, on mean, a heavy, so on a heavy snow day where it is predicted that, that you know, there, even if it snowed in the morning and it was predicted that it would snow later in the day, um, or if it was going to snow all day, um, beyond when they might get done at, you know, for the school bus to, school buses to bring children home, um, we need to have a way that they can stagger, somehow stagger the crews, either take a break and, and it, you know, maybe, maybe there is some maintenance or something that somebody needs to do, but. Yeah, just go home in the middle of the day. There's days, there, there's also storms where it's, it's fine in the morning and it doesn't start snowing till two. There's no reason to come in at four in the morning or even six, just right. come in at 11. Yeah. I don't know how to work that, but you gotta, you gotta no, be thinking. The whole, the whole crew could do that. Correct. Yeah, you know, and which seems only fair that the whole crew should do that. Right. But um, it's been this way for a long time. I'm not sure how well that'll fly. Well, yeah, we do some try, degree right? they like their overtime. Yeah. What's that? To some degree, they like their overtime. Yeah, no, they yeah. do like their overtime. In fact, yeah. they kind of count on the winter snow plowing all the time. Yeah. But, but uh, have you? How does that work with the state and, and the safety aspect of it? Can they work 16, 17 hours legally? They can. They there can. is no, there, you're, uh, the, the driving restrictions don't apply to state or town employees. Really? Because I know my are, son My son works for Retrans. They'll work them 18 hours, send them home for two hours, and send them right back out again. Which is crazy. Not that I'm advocating that. It's just... Right. Yeah, I hear you. Well, I, I, the other question I have, I guess, is how much overtime do you want to pay? We, we budget pretty heavily for overtime and, um, you know, just because you never know what the winter is going to be like. So right. I don't think that's really an issue. I think part of it is, um, you know, like say there's an early morning plowing and it's still snowing. So they might, you know, there might be a break of two or three hours before they go right. back out again and then another break and then you know, going out to plow for the school buses, if there are school buses, um, and then, you know, another break, and then going out again for the evening. Um, so there would be times that, you know, people could either just shut down or go home. Um, you know, we I think- to stagger them. Yeah, there's some way, let, let's see if maybe they could figure out a, a system that would work for them. We could ask that of them um and see if they could figure out a system and you know just let them know and you know that we need to be able to assure town residents that there will be a crew on these heavy snow days continually you know all day long snow days or even light snow days but it comes late come it comes late yeah that there's a crew there to do a uh, full road plowing uh, before you know the traditional time that people are coming home from work let's say so, you know, I know it says that it takes them about three hours to do the route. So let's say they went out at five or 4.30. So the roads were, you know, had been recently plowed before 
Right. Um, and maybe maybe they can figure out a way that it'll work for them. And you know, I'm you know they don't have to be there all day. And I certainly you know sometimes there is maintenance work to be done to assure that everything will will work for the next round. You know, you got to fill the trucks back up with sand and get them in the garage to keep them warm. You know, all that stuff. There is stuff that does happen beyond the plowing. Um, but if there is a chance for people to take a a, a significant break and, and go home, um, I would love to encourage them to do that. Um, I think there's particular flexibility with our two part-time part employees. Yeah. you could send the two full-time guys out in the morning if they really want to work their regular shift and then bring the other guys in later in the day that's just the thought i had too yeah well uh it, first thing in the morning from what i'm seeing and what i've been told is it takes three yeah. you have to do the song okay. for the quarry but by nine o'clock seven or eight eight thirty send them home one of them is pretty well freed out yeah, yeah send them home Yep. Send so, that one home and then have them come back in for four o'clock and yep. Yep. And the one and the one that didn't come come in in the morning could be part of that. Could come in. And maybe they wouldn't need all three. Well, they probably would need three trucks for the for the next round too. But um, no, but, no, they shouldn't. No, they should. Because the, the quarry, they should stay ahead of that. I mean, yeah. when the, they get back in there at eight thirty, it's probably time to go back up to the quarry. Right. One person could run up there, and the other ones could be filling the trucks. One could go home. Okay. Um, okay. I kind of agree with Michael Chuck. If you guys can work with, uh, if you work with them guys just to see if they can come up, just tell them our, our goal is to spread it out so that there's roads are covered between whatever it is, this four in the morning and the eight o'clock at night or seven, whatever the policy says. Okay. Yeah. And common sense too. You know, if we have a, right. we had that bad storm last April that really someone needed to be in until nine o'clock that night, there's going to be times. Oh yeah. Sometimes you're just going to have to go in a little longer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I hear you. This is what it is. It mm -hmm. is. It is. Mother Nature's that way. You yeah. got it. We don't get to pick when it snows. <laughs> no. No. But, okay. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see them try to come up with a plan if they know what. Yeah, what, me too. I, I'm all yeah. about it. Uh, yeah, you well, know, I, I don't. I don't want to. Uh, have to stand there and tell somebody they got to go home at right. nine o'clock and get your right. butt back in here at four o'clock and mm -hmm. uh, you know it's you shouldn't have to do that yeah no. there should be common sense enough there so they can work it out themselves yeah okay all right we'll work on it tomorrow okay great thank you well we'll start tomorrow we'll start. <laughs> <laughs> okay i had a question for you chuck on or maybe a, a comment like get your thoughts on it um, I, I noticed that when they plowed the town lot, and they must have used the low pro, that the chains are starting to really tear that pavement up. Maybe you could look at it and see what you think. If maybe we shouldn't be doing it with that truck, and maybe doing it with the small truck, but I'll leave it up to what you think. Yeah, uh, I've been talking to Greg about that. He's so if you look in front of the fire pro. station, it cut cut that pavement up pretty bad, and we do that all winter. Our forty thousand dollar paving job is going to be done yeah. in. All right, I'll look at it tomorrow. I hadn't, I hadn't paid any attention. But yeah, I didn't. It wasn't horrible, but you look right where you had to turn. Well, there will be. And then it was. You do that all winter. There'll be a groove yep. cut right in the pavement. Yep. Yep. Just the thought of maybe using that small truck to clear those lots. Well, they, they get should anyway. Closer to the doors, and that won't do damage. They should be using it anyway because they got to salt that anyway. Right. So that was just my thought that we'd set that little truck up to plow out the fire station the town offices and the school could handle that pretty easily yeah but i yeah. could be wrong i'll leave it to your egg but look at that pavement and tell me what you think <laughs> oh well oh well actually that one ton is up to donuts right now i tried to get it into the ford garage and i can't get it in there until after december 15th oh boy <laughs> power, power steering pump went on it oh yes oh yeah i yeah. just did one of those on the department's Five fifty there. Is that right? Yeah. How bad's that? Did you do it? wasn't it horrible. No, no, they did it. The Ford dealer. I can't remember. It wasn't a huge expense. Yeah. No. Ours didn't quit. It just got really noisy. This one here, you with the plow on it, you can't stare it. There you go. Yeah. So it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um it's out to Donna's car store and they're supposed to do it Wednesday. All right. Mm -hmm. So 
But yes, uh, I agree with you 100% that black top should be put out of that truck. Yeah, because look at you'll see it's chewing it up. If it does that all winter, it'll be a mess by the summer. That's my yeah. concern. Yeah, you'll be right back with your water puddle for you. Yeah. Wash bay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, anything else um, for Chuck at all, or any other other thoughts, Chuck, that you've had? <clears throat> no. Um, okay. I did. We, I did send the boys up to Goodall Road. I believe their name is Reed. They're on the farm way down on the end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he called me up, and the first pass, they plowed across his lawn. Oops. So I had him go up and put some stakes up. He said last year that he had to hire a mini excavator to Ooh. clean up up there. And yeah. I told him if that was the case this year, to call me and that the town would go up and clean it up. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, it, they're on his, his lawn both sides there. And from the way it talked, it was close to a dump truck load of stuff to our up. So, yeah. Wow. I agree. That's going to happen when it's soft. We just got to clean it up. It's right. Right. You can't avoid it sometimes. That was my point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. And he, he understood that. He just mm -hmm. was trying to shy away from having to rent an excavator. And that's yeah. when I told him that if the town was responsible for it, we'd fix it. Yeah. I just remembered uh, uh, Skip Lindsay sent me an email this week, um, or maybe probably was last week or this weekend, that he noticed that the uh, Hattie Bell Road sign on right off Route 14 had been knocked over. And just yes, wondered, he if, did. wondered okay. if that could be yep. fixed. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It can. Okay. So, um, Anything else for the town highway report? I don't think so. Everything seems to be, oh, uh, yeah, there is. The greater is losing antifreeze. I had Tim up here. Mm -hmm. and we didn't have the right adapters to put a pressure test on the, the radiator. He's coming back tomorrow morning, and we're going to do okay. it tomorrow so he's morning. Still, still working on that. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It doesn't seem to be going in the engine. Right now, things are pointing towards the air compressor. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So and that's liquid cooled. Yes. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. We're getting a lot of sludge in the air tanks. Uh, hopefully. Okay. Probably a seal gone in there somewhere. Well, or a head gasket. Yep. That's true. In, in the compressor. I mean, if you change the compressor, you got to you got to put a new one on anyway. Uh, okay. uh, it's not it's not that inexpensive a deal. It's time consuming to do it, but it ain't. Yeah. It'll be a, yeah. It'll be a while before you need that for snow. So getting it fixed. Right. Well, at least getting it ready so we can fix it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm shooting for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else at all? All right. Okay. So um, we've done the town library roof. So our, our the next um, we're going to be going into executive session. Um, and Leaf, are you there? Yeah. I'm here. Um, so we, you had mentioned that you could make me the host, and um, and then the, and we could continue on as an executive session. I th yep. You about I ready think to do that? Ready to do that. So, so um, I'll, I'll make that motion, Michael, that we go into executive session, uh, uh, reciting uh, one VSA three one three A three evaluation of a public employee. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 